Hi Booktube, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie, and today I'm going to give you guys a bit of an update of how my reading is going. Um, so I'm also doing this because I, um, I want, I'm going to pre-film, I think I'm going to pre-film some videos, I don't know yet. Yes, Terry will be coming from Florida for a visit, and she'll be here for up to, um, like... 10 days or so in the first week so I probably won't get a lot of reading done I'll get some reading done because as much as I love the idea of reading with your friends I don't know if we'll do that because not because I don't want to obviously but I don't because we haven't seen each other in person for two years and I don't know if she's the type who would want to do that anyway that she would see that as a fun thing to do with your friend because you know she wants to talk you know we want to talk so, because in person. So, I don't know if I'll get a lot of reading done. I'm going to try to get as much, I'm going to try to get at least a little bit of reading done. Ideally, but I don't know. Like, I'll still bring a, when, if we go to the pool, I'll still bring a book with me to the pool. And I'll read in bed before I go to sleep. Let you know how that goes. Um, but she, I know she's going to want to watch. She wants to watch the last season of Game of Thrones because she never saw it. And I'm also kind of curious what she's going to think of the last season. Because I know it was a universally hated season because it was so short. People do not like the direction the characters went, especially with Danny. Um, so I am curious. She's, you know, I'm curious. But especially because she's not like, she hasn't read the book. She's not like a hardcore fan that really just, like, she's a little bit um more like... In between the hardcore fans and fans like my parents who liked it when it was going on and had thoughts on it and everything, but didn't, like, they're not obsessed. They're not passionately as in, as invested in it as, like, I would be, for instance, or some, you know, some of the other people that love the show. Um, so I think she's between those two groups where she's, like, she likes it, has a good time with it. She's a little more invested in them, you know, than my parents, but she's not as invested as some people, like, um, I feel like, but anyway, um, so I was able to squeeze in one more book for May, and that was, um, Before They Are Hanged, which was a, a fun book. It was even, it had a lot more going on in this one, a lot more things happening, a lot more action and battle scenes in that one, stuff like that. I will talk about more because I might, I don't know if I'll do a review or just talk about it when I talk, when I do my wrap up for may and june but anyway so I, I was able to squeeze that one in because you know i get i got through blade the blade itself so naturally i figured i'll probably get through before they are hanged really quickly which i did i ran it within a few days so um and i um so it's a pretty good month i read quite a few novels and then i read some stories from the skeleton crew so that really helped add to my, you know, the number of books I read this month. So, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed all that I read. And I liked, I didn't like all the short stories, but that's the, that's the thing with short story collections. You're not going to like every story or every novella in some cases. You're, you're going to, you know, but overall it was, so far I have enjoyed What's in the Skeleton Crew. Just like I enjoyed What's in Everything Eventual. And, but I'll talk more and elaborate more at the end of June, or right into the beginning of July. But as of right now, I'm currently reading, okay, so I attempted, I was going to start reading in middle March, and I did, like, read two more chapters from this one, um, of my reread of middle March, but here's the thing, I was, as I was reading middle March, rereading middle March in, um, reading reread another book I'm going to talk about I was feeling guilty because I have so many books on my shelf that I've been sitting there for a while or books I just got for my or there was a book I just got for my birthday and then this one along with another along with another book I bought you know and I bought them recently within the month and then there were books that I bought recently within the last two months and so I'm feeling like, oh, I need to get to those. I need to get to books that have been sitting on my shelf for a long time that I haven't read at all. Or books that have been, that I recently got in the past few months. 
that I need to get to or books that I got for last Christmas and I want to show people, you know, like, um, like I keep thinking about every time, like I said, every time the people talk about, you know, the Stormlight Archives, I always feel guilty because, oh, I have to finally finish The Way of Kings and, um, or like, you know, I'm anticipating when the next season of of Wheel of Time comes out because I'm still gonna watch it. Um so I'm like, oh I need to catch up and read book three now with the Dragon Reborn before I get to um before the new season comes out. So yeah, so I only I haven't a lot to say so far about this one except, you know, Mary um not Mary Ann, Mary um Dorothea has, you know, has accepted the to marry the proposal of Casabon and they're preparing to get married. And, you know, and Sir James Chenham still gets on my nerves in this book because, you know, I I feel like he's not entirely wrong on his thoughts about their engagement, but it's none of his business. She turned him down. She said she wasn't interested in him. And he still proceeds to, you know, have thoughts and tell her father, oh, her father needs to do something about this. It's like, no, you're not, you're not even married to her sister yet. And you think you have a right to an opinion on this matter. And he doesn't. It just annoys me so much. Um, but it's... A lot of my thoughts are the same so far. I, I enjoy it. I love the book. And, you know, my thoughts are the same about all these characters so far. I don't think anything would dramatically change on how I feel about this book. Um... I think the only way, like, things would dramatically change is if I had read this years and years ago, and if I had read it back then when I was a kid, then maybe things would change. But, I mean, I definitely am able to even more, love it even more and take everything in than I did last time. Because there were, I feel like that's, for me, there's a lot of books, especially older books, where I feel like I need to read them more than once. To really take to absorb it all and really take in because even though it's still these at least these books and like Dickens and the Brontes and all those books are in English they're in English but there there is a different there is a differentness to the language to in, to the English in older books I mean it's not like you know old English like reading Beowulf or something but it's still a bit um still a bit different. Not the way we speak today. And, you know, when I was younger, it was a little more challenging. I've gotten more comfortable with it. Um, I mean, but there's still times when I'm like, okay, you know, what, what, what are you saying? Like, just one simple sentence would suffice. <laughs> I mean, I love the language, but there are times that it just can be overwhelming and so descriptive that it's like, okay, is this person, you know, How's this person feeling? Just tell me how they feel. <laughs> but anyway, so I was gonna, I, I had thought about going to the pool today, but, you know, I don't know yet because I don't want to walk because it's hot. <laughs> um, my dad is back, so he could take me up there. Um, oh, there's actually, oh, I remember looking at this, there are some things in here you can't tell. You can see a little bit, um... right here I dog when I dog ear it's because I want to save the page for the sake of like a quote or something because I'm trying to get more into quoting finding quotes and stuff um but that's the only reason I dog ear or like if I'm worried the bookmark's gonna fall out because you know in my bag or something then I dog ear or you know make sure I mark the page that I'm on but yeah, I don't, so yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this one, just because I haven't got very far in it, except for, like I said, I don't like James, Sir James. <laughs> so what I'm really, that's what I really want to focus on is, okay, so yesterday I started reading, I finally, I decided to go and pick up The Dragon Republic. Now I'm trying to do a sort of theme for the summer, and this is, it's not a, it's not a book, you know, with, like, books that have to do with water or heat. 
you know so this one is blue there's no um oh, see well there is a character that is water like connected to the water but um this book is blue and um Rin's power she's connected to the god of the the phoenix god so so there's fire so I'm gonna read this one I mean so it kind of fits the theme and then also no not all the books I'm thinking about reading this summer fit the theme of course like I want to read the stand in the wasteland well the wasteland might be able to fit and sunland ascends doesn't really fit and of course middle march doesn't fit so not all the books fit my theme but um anyway so but i'm gonna i'm trying so anyway with this one we have like it picks up where the other book left off and the characters um rin with her new group of friends are traveling along they are trying to assassinate someone assassinate i think the empress and rin has no control it's kind of a good like i'm like which funny which it's kind of uh fantastical way of looking at addiction like a fantasy and a metaphor for addiction which is funny because i was recently watching an interview with ewan mcgregor and pedro pascal like literally just now and they were talking about train spotting i was thinking how my own it was train spotting is a good movie both but it's you know i'm not into stories about drug addiction but I think if it's done in a fantasy kind of way and not, not too close to, not a, like a contemporary type of story, if it's done in a fantasy kind of way, then yeah, I'm more interested. Because it's not just about the drug addiction. And there's a lot more going on than that. It's not just straight up about that. Um, but yeah, there was a failed attempt to assassinate the Empress and Rin is like I said she kind of messed it up for them and there's one character who really calls Ren out on her bullshit and thinks she wasn't a good she's not a good leader and thinks she shouldn't be the leader but he's honoring Alton's request that she be the leader of this group so it's gonna be interesting to see her um see her struggles and um, they're gonna call back to a character that we met in the last book that has disappeared and they're going I, I think going by the title they're gonna go back to his home in the prologue scene something's going to be going on with that as well that it refers to something in the water some monster in the water I think and so far it's really good and I forgot that this was another book where the chapters are not that long I mean some of the chapters are longer but I appreciate that when fantasy does that because I know a lot of other stories don't always sometimes their chapters are really long especially you know older books like Dickens can write some long chapters um although he's also you know he can write a mix well he can write a mixture of both chapters both long and short chapters so um but with fantasy it makes it go by a lot faster if you're reading a chunky fantasy when the chapters are short and last but not least, I just started reading, finally, okay, so I got back into Akash Kings because I was feeling, um, I was feeling a little guilty that I had, because I'm so worried that with some of these series, I'm going to fall behind on them, and they're going to be sitting there for years before I pick them up again and continue, and then I don't want to have to start over all over again, again. So, um, I was like, okay, I better pick up, um, a clash of things, a clash of kings again. So, we are, so we've gone, we've, um, Tyrion has come to King's Landing to be the hand in the place of his father for now. So, he's trying to figure out things and fix, fix things in King's Landing because the peasants don't have any food. And they're running, you know, he's trying to do what he can to help improve things. Because Joffrey sucks as a king. <laughs> and, um, of course, Stannis has sent this letter out calling out Cersei on her incest. And that Joffrey is not the true king, the true king. And 
Stan is calling himself king, which um, Rowling is not going to like that. Even though technically Stan is, he has a right to as far as being the, the brother, the next in line to Robert for the throne. Like, legally, he is meant to be king. But I think he would be not that... Like, what Stannis doesn't understand, what he refuses to admit, is that you still, to be a good leader, people still need to respect you and like you and want to be, you know, admiring you. And people don't. They don't like Stannis. And you have Renly is still likable. And people admire him. Um, the problem is he's so vain and caught up in his own, his own glory, and that's his biggest problem. He's all he's um, very vain and cocky, and but he's more likable than Robert and Stannis. So he might be a good king for a period of time if he ever had gotten the chance to. Um, but of course, you know, if you know the story, if you've seen the show at least. Then you know. Then you know what happens to him. Um, let's see. Stannis isn't very likable. He's not respected. People can't stand the guy, and so there lies the problem with him. You know, and at least for a while, Robert was likable. I think until until he became king, but. As they say, he was a better warrior. He was a good warrior. He's a badass warrior. He was not meant to sit on the throne. Which I think is why he got lazy and preferred having his hand do everything for him. Because he didn't, he did not want to. Because he was just tired and was bored. Um. And then we have, um... Bran is, of course, forced to take his brother's place as, you know, the Lord of Winterfell. He's not really liking this. And you have Arya, who's still traveling with, those, with Gen Gendry and Lamy and Hot Pie and all them. And Yorin. They're trying to get to the, um, get to the wall. And they stop this one particular place, which, get, which gets attacked by people who work for the Lannisters. Um, so there's this, a bit of a battle just now um so like I said there's not a lot because I didn't read a lot because I was just thinking about how I want you know I want to film these videos and I was thinking I might want to go to the pool and um I'm bad with time management basically I'm not very good with time management I'm trying to find a good time to get things done you know having spread out my activities you know I still want to make my sandwich because I have to go back to work tomorrow and you know, I need a sandwich during my 15-minute break. So, you know, trying to balance that. Oh, and the fact that I also want to clean up my, continue to clean up my room a little bit before Terry comes. So, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to balance, you know, reading time and, you know, getting some, if I go to the pool, I want to, I think I might want to eat something before I go to the pool. Although I might not go, I don't know. It, it depends. I don't know how I'm feeling about going. But there's, you know, um, so there's a lot of, you know, trying to figure out how to get everything I want to get done today, you know, to really have a good full day. So like I said, I don't have a lot to say about this, um, but I'll read a little bit more today. I might read a little bit more today of everything. Okay, so, since I don't really have a lot to say about my books, let me just say, I just finished watching The Mandalorian Season 2, and I cannot wait for Season 3, and oh my, I love Season 2. Now, it was such a fun, it was such a fun series, it, like, so far, and, of course, I, like everybody else, loves Mando. He's awesome and badass, and he just, and, like, I think, I, I mean, I liked the character of, um, of, I don't, I'm trying to blank here on his name, Martel, um, don't, Prince, no, not Doran. I can't think of, oh my god, I'm trying to blank here on his name, but Pedro Pastel's character, um, in Game of Thrones, I liked him, and I liked Pedro's performance, you know, and he was on an episode of Buffy when he was younger, 
um he played a student in her first in the first episode of season four um which is funny because he was a he becomes a vampire in that episode and then he i you know i've been watching interviews with pedro pascal because he's now new a new favorite and he um he plays a van i think a vampire or at least does a vampire movie that's kind of a parody of the vampire genre like the original buffy movie was i think i think that's what the original movie was intended as kind of a parody of vampire movies um i don't remember what the movie was called though but he's been in the business for a while it's again he's another one of those actors that has been working on stuff for a long time and i think he just didn't establish his career um until or at least he didn't get seen by the rest of the the rest of the universe um until game of thrones like that's when i think people really his career shot off and then after game of thrones there was you know star wars i mean mandalorian i say Mar mandalorian um wonder woman 1984 despite the fact that movie was not well received um so which yeah i mean and you know i was watching that interview with him and ewan mcgregor for the you know same reason all of a sudden i'm when i have become a new fan of his although again he's another one of those actors that i probably i don't know if i'll see every one of his movies because you know he might do movies that just aren't my kind of story it's the problem a lot of times i like actors that they do think they do projects that aren't my type of story like you know like train spotting or something you know so it's a little frustrating because I want to try to see everything they do, but then, you know, they'll do something that's just not kind of, just kind of bores me and is not, doesn't hold my interest. But anyway, so, um, and like I said, when Terry comes, we'll probably watch season eight of Game of Thrones. And then I'm hoping I'll be able to squeeze in Bridgerton as well, which will be here. I'm much, like I said, the nice thing about her, about this this time is that we don't have a convention to go to so we can watch tv and stuff like that you know go to the bookstore go to the pool we can do a lot more stuff that has nothing to do with walk around in costumes that can be really uncomfortable sometimes and um which actually i'm wondering if we're gonna i'm gonna see some mandalorians next time when we're finally able to go back to a convention i bet you i will i, I bet you there's gonna be some mandalorians walking around I mean, I'm sure there have been because we they had a convention this year. They're they're having it this year. So I'm sure there's gonna be some Mandalorians walking around. And some um like there's gonna like there's gonna be more Star Wars again this this year and hopefully if we go next year. Um maybe even and actually I wanna do some Bridgerton, like Eloise as far as my looks. I could be Eloise because I have the right hair. Um, but that means I would have to get a different dress. Because my dress was the one I got for the one where we were going to do like um, Downtown Abbey 1920s kind of thing with our costumes. Like, um, so I'll probably wear that next time we go to convention because I didn't get to wear it last time because we ended up having to cancel the convention because of COVID. Yay! I love COVID. But, um, yeah, so, um, but anyway, so that's, I guess that's all I gotta say. I might make another video, a couple other videos, um, I don't know yet, I don't know yet, I mean, I think I probably will, just to put some videos out, you know, since I won't be filming for the next several days, unless I come with an idea of something for Terry and I do, but it's kind of hard because, like I said, I can't share the books, all my books with her, you know, because it's just our tastes aren't, aren't really aligned, which is funny because our tastes are aligned with TV shows, um, but as far as books, it's not the same, you know, um, so it would be kind of hard for me to do stuff, I would have to probably stick to, like, TV shows and movies and stuff like that. And even then, there is some limitations with that. But, um, anyway, so I hope you guys liked this video. And, um, I hope you are having 
If you're living in the Northern Hemisphere, I hope you are having a great summer so far. In um, Southern Hemisphere, I'm assuming it's winter for you guys, I think. But anyway, um, I hope that, and you're also, I hope you're also having a good, um, you're having, enjoying your reading and staying healthy, happy, and safe. And if you like this video, give it a short enough to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already and you like this video and want to see more from me and click the bell icon if you want to be notified when I post new videos. All right then. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye.